If India was enslaved for so long, if the people here could be conquered and vanished, hmm, and could be made to live against their will, it was not because <laughs> they were spiritual people. It was because they were not at all spiritual. I ask you a simple question: What is the most fundamental tenet of spirituality? It is to know what is this game called the world and who am I? Right? That is the foundation. What is all this going on? And it's the most obvious question that any intelligent man must ask. Right? Only if you are very stupid, then you will be not spiritual. Otherwise, you have to be spiritual. What else can you be? Spirituality is common sense. Don't you want to know what all this is? That is spirituality. Now, if that is spirituality, and the first question you are asking is, who am I? Hmm? And if you have attained any depth, then first of all, your body association. <coughs> Weakens. Hmm? Your body association weakens. You do not remain a slave of the material. And what is the body? Material. You stop giving importance to material, and then you also stop giving importance to body. The man or woman who gives so much importance to the body is bound to give a lot of importance to houses and cars and makeup. And money and glitter, these go together, right? Because all are material. If the body is important as material, then everything else is important as a material. If I am a spiritual man, first thing I learn is that material is deceptive. Hmm? That whatever is material, that is not really important. that the really important lies somewhere else such a man usually will not want to fight because most of the fighting that happens it happens for the sake of material this man usually would refuse to fight he would say fine why should i waste my time with idiots <coughs> hmm what is the point you have brought all these guns and tanks what for idiots go oh, take it have you heard tale of the sufi he was lying in a small hut hmm and the roof has holes and the moon is shining and he is looking at the moon hmm and then a thief comes and the thief is taking all this away and the saint is looking at the moon they looking at the moon the thief thinks that he must be sleeping so whatever is there few clothes a few utensils maybe a little bit of money he takes away everything and the saint is wide awake and after the thief is gone he says wish i could give him the moon as well so take it away it's not important 
दैट इज द एटीट्यूड ऑफ द स्पिरिचुअल मैन यूजली मटीरियल बाय द सेम एटीट्यूड वेन ई फाइट यू कैन नॉट डिफीट हिम बिकॉज हाउ डू डिफीट अ मैन यू डिफीट हिम थ्रू द फियर ऑफ डेथ एंड वॉट इज डेथ एनिहिलेशन ऑफ द बॉडी वॉट विल योर एटम बॉम्ब डू किल द बॉडी राइट बॉडी इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट हाउ कैन यू डिफीट हिम दैट मैन हैज नो फियर ऑफ द बॉडी हाउ कैन यू डिफीट हिम वेन द स्पिरिचुअल मैन फाइट एंड ही वोट फाइट ऑफ एन बट वेन ही फाइट देर इज नो वे यू कैन डिफीट हिम यू कैन किल हिम बट नॉट डिफीट हिम एंड इंडियंस वर रिपीटेडली डिफीटेड नाउ कैन दे बी स्पिरिचुअल कैन अ स्पिरिचुअल आर्मी बी एवर डिफीटेड it will fight to the last man last man the last puff of life and to the last breath breath but he cannot be defeated and what about the indian armies who would be in the ratio of 10 is to 1 against the invaders 10 indians against one invader and be still defeated now these are surely not spiritual people these are surely not spiritual people so let no one say that spirituality led to the enslavement of india lack of spirituality led to the enslavement of india there is another beautiful story regarding an invader and the spiritual man being trying to be enslaved hmm desh so but never know you know these are just stories but still these are very poignant stories <coughs> This is practical, not only the story. So, Sikandar has come hmm, to India, fought, invaded, won a little, could not proceed beyond a point, and now he is returning, <coughs> and he is returning with a lot of loot. So he is still not satisfied. He is saying, you know, beyond all these jewels and money that I have looted from, <coughs> I want more. what else can i take from here so his generals tell him that sir whatever could be won under the sun you already have it what can you take from here he says there must be special something special about india that i can take they say there is one thing found here that is not found anywhere else something called sanyasi that we don't find in other parts of the world so let's take one sanyasi so he says yes good whatever that thing is go and bring it bring a few sanyasis we will take them to our motherland let them let's take them to yunan so his soldiers go and they check about in a few villages where can we find sanyasis and people laugh at them and they say sanyasis are not found anywhere they don't have any address they still have we want a sanyasi king is asking for it he will kill us they say fine there is a river there and by the side of the river one particular sanyasi sometimes comes but when he comes nobody knows he is unpredictable sometimes he comes for then for months he doesn't come so you can go and check there so good luck for the soldiers they find the sanyasi there they try to catch him first of all he runs so hard that nobody can catch him and he makes them run and run and run and sometimes he he would swim from one end to the other and then come back it's his river he knows it so well nobody can catch him when he finds that everybody is tired then he goes to him and says fine take me <laughs> so they take him they take him to alexander <laughs> and he is totally naked so first of all alexander is angry that you know he has no etiquette this man <laughs> how can he come in front of me without underwear <laughs> but the sanyasi is standing there dangling his assets and you know <laughs> nothing <laughs> it's sikandar who is blushing <laughs> so then sikandar says prostrate don't you know i am a king don't you know how to display the right manners in front of a king and as he says chill man <laughs> has stopped doing that long back forget about me prostrating to the world i don't prostrate even to myself forget about me following the will of the world i don't follow even my own wishes how what do you mean by prostrating in front of you as again that doesn't understand this hmm there was no hidp <laughs> <laughs> what does he mean by not following your own wish well, sanyasi is standing there and you know, looking here and it's cool so second there says i'll chop off your head 
And I say, it's cool, nice. That is one thing I've never seen. My own head being chopped off. So you chop off my head. Sikandar says, do you know what that means? Your head will be chopped off and it will roll in the dust. Sunny says, wonderful. It will roll in the dust. Sikandar says, and I'll look at it and clap. Nasi says, fine. Just as you will look at it, I too will look at it. Sikandar releases him. Go. I want to reach home safely. <laughs> Funny part is, the sannyasi goes away, Sikandar never reaches his home. He dies in the journey. Good. That is the attitude of the spiritual man. Fine, chop off my head. Who is afraid of death? Just as you will watch me die, I will also watch myself die. This is the body. Can you defeat an army of sannyasis? Can you? But Indian armies are repeatedly defeated. In the battle of Plassey, hmm? Indians to British were a dozen is to one. Hmm? It's a seminal battle. A dozen to one and yet defeated. All right. That doesn't mean that the spiritual man will have great love for the motherland and will keep fighting. He won't unnecessarily pick up a fight. <coughs> he is not quarrelsome. He lets go. But if it comes to that, like in the battle of Kurukshetra, when it is the time to pick up weapons, That's what Krishna has been saying. It's time to pick up the weapon. Fight. And now there can be no going back. All right. Usually what passes off in the name of spirituality is just rotten, organized religious practice. That's a blot in the name of spirituality. That is not at all spirituality. Let no one call following any kind of ritual as spiritual. No ritual is spiritual. Hmm? But what we, do we see? Somebody reads a few books, we start calling him spiritual. Hmm? Somebody keeps fasts, we start calling him spiritual. What does this have to do with spirituality? We were talking of Ashtavakra that day and he said, what rubbish is this? Kaam, Arth, Dharma, Moksha. He said, drop the religion. Drop Dharma. If Dharma is just a way to attain earth and calm, then drop dharma. People like Ashtavakra have no interest in religion. And that is why moksha is available to them. In many, many ways, spirituality and religion are opposites of each other. It is very difficult for a religious man to be spiritual. Hmm? And when I say religion here, I mean organized religion, not swadharma. That is another thing. If you are a Hindu or a Muslim, it is impossible for you to be spiritual. The Hindu will be religious, but not spiritual. Till the time you identify with a particular sect or a creed, how can you be spiritual? Because spirituality is getting rid of all identifications. Till the time you are attached to even Ashtavakra, how can you be spiritual? There is no way you can be spiritual. Getting it? Let's not take do these two words in the same breath. Never. They are not close. Religion has often been 
hostile, antagonistic to spirituality. Truly spiritual people have been killed by religious people. What you call as international terrorism today is very much a religion driven phenomena. Where is spirituality in all this? What you see in your religious gatherings, fairs, all that is religious thing, organized religion. Hmm? Religion can be wonderful if it is an individual thing, if it is the quest of the individual mind to return to its source. Hmm? That is what Krishna refers to as Swadharma. That dharma is beautiful, but that dharma cannot be a set of practices to be followed and books to be read. 